What's up everybody and welcome back to another edition of The Dig, a series dedicated to helping you improve profitability on your farm. Today in the studio, we are so excited to have with us, drum roll please, from Bex Hybrids. He is a field agronomist from Northeast Illinois, Chad Taylor. Okay, okay. I'm Chad Kaleher, field agronomist, and today we're gonna to talk about the keys to a profitable fungicide pass. I'm Aaron. I'm Colin. Let's, Let's dig in. in. We've got a great episode for you today because we're putting the fun in fungicides. Fungicides primarily prevent or mitigate disease pressures, but they can also increase water use efficiencies, photosynthesis, and nitrate reductase activity. They also help increase the window for grain fill and improve stress tolerance. When applying fungicides to soybeans, we also get the additional benefit of improved leaf retention, which helps increase yields. One of the most important factors to consider when planning for a profitable fungicide pass is timing. Questions we get are, what's the best growth stage to target? What time of day should I make the fungicide application? And what fungicide products will give me the most bang for my buck? So here at Bex and PFR, we wanted to put fungicide timing to the test. So we implemented a handful of timing related studies to help growers make data-driven decisions to increase ROI on their farms. I really like these studies because they look at various application timings and how they impact disease control, plant health, and overall yields. We have multi-year, multi-location PFR proven fungicide timing data on both corn and soybeans. And well, the data really speaks for itself. When looking at corn, our PFR data has consistently shown that the most profitable fungicide application timing to help combat these diseases is the VTR1 growth stage. The three-year average yield increase of 11.6 bushel an acre and an ROI average of $20 an acre, this is definitely the stage you want to target. These later fungicide applications in corn can help control diseases that tend to move in after pollination. Diseases like tar spot, northern corn leaf blight, gray leaf spot, and southern rust, all of which have become significant foliar diseases of corn in our area that can lead to significant economic losses and harvest issues. Likewise, foliar fungicide applications in soybeans can help control diseases that tend to affect the crop early on. Diseases like septoria brown spot, which can have an impact after periods of prolonged wetness, and frog eye leaf spot, which can lead to economic losses and harvest issues. Our seven-year multi-location data shows a 3.8 bushel per acre average yield gain and over $17 an acre average ROI advantage to applications made at that R3 growth stage. When we look at the growth stages of soybeans, approximately 70% of a soybean plant's yield comes from the middle of the plant, or nodes six through 13. And those nodes are usually present at the R3 growth stage. That's why it's so important to ensure you're hitting this crucial stage in the crop's development. The R3 growth stage in soybeans is identified by having at least one pod that is 3 16 inch long at one of the four uppermost nodes on the main stem of a fully developed leaf. Because R3 is the start of pod development, it's also the best time to control diseases and insects. An R3 application would provide additional protection to those nodes, which might explain the positive yield response. Okay, so we've talked about growth stage timing, but what about the time of day? Mornings? The heat of the day? At night? When should I be targeting our applications to ensure the highest ROI? That is a great question, Colin, and time of day does matter. For both corn and soybeans, our data indicates that fungicide applications are most effective when applied in the morning, as dew can help spread the fungicide over the leaf's surface. When comparing applications made at 8 a.m. and 3 p.m., our three-year multi-location data shows a 2.6 bushel per acre yield increase to morning applications in corn and a half bushel per acre yield increase advantage for applications made at 8 a.m. in soybeans. It's also important to note carrier rates when planning for fungicides. Like other foliar applied products, water volume with a fungicide can affect coverage. The amount of product capable of penetrating the leaf surface and overall fungicide efficacy. So that brings us to how much carrier volume should you be using to get the most out of that fungicide application? Well, Aaron, research suggests that 15 to 20 gallons per acre of carrier is the sweet spot. Our PFR proven data indicates that on average, 20 gallons per acre of carrier provided a 3.4 bushel per acre yield advantage 
and a ROI increase of $18 per acre in soybeans. In corn, we saw an eight bushel per acre yield advantage and a $12 per acre average return on investment increase. So now that you know when to spray, the question remains, you know, what should you spray? Well, to date, we've identified six PFR proven full air fungicide products for corn and eight proven products for soybeans, with the yield advantages ranging from two and a half to six and a half bushel per acre in soybeans and seven and a half to 11 bushel per acre in corn. These are the products that you should consider on your operation. Fungicide additives are a great tank mix option that can help improve plant health, yields, and profitability. Crops require ample nutrients that must be mineralized from soil organic matter. In addition, soil mineralization may be lowered during hot, dry spells that are more common during the pollination period, thus limiting availability and movement through the soil. Because of this, foliar fungicide applications with a tank mixed additive may help supplement micronutrient availability in years with limited rainfall. The addition of supplemental fertility like boron, a micronutrient that is critical to the growth and health of crops, has many benefits. By including it in your tank, you can maximize your field pass while improving your chance for increased profits and an enhanced return on investment. In corn, late season boron applications can improve flower retention, promote pollination, and improve kernel set. PFR has tested several boron additive products over the last few years, three of which have earned PFR proven status for corn. Boron Plus, Feast XL, and Harvest More Urea Mate have delivered significant yield gains and increased ROI when applied during other foliar applications. Another product that has shown significant promise is Brandt Smart Beemo. Our two-year average ROI data shows a return on investment of almost $15 an acre and an average yield increase of almost five bushels an acre when added to that fungicide pass that you're already out there making. On soybeans, we have two proven products. Harvest More Urea Mate, which is a three-year average yield advantage with a 0.8 bushel an acre and a $2.22 average return on investment. Brandt Smart BMO has a $13 average ROI and a $2 bushel yield advantage. Both of these products provide essential micronutrients, including boron and molybdenum, to the crop. That's how you say it, right? Molybdenum. Mo molly what? Guys, it's molybdenum. It's a micronutrient that is responsible for a variety of essential functions in the plant mainly nitrogen metabolism. Boron is complementary to molybdenum and is responsible for cell wall structure, sugar transport, cell division, and seed and grain formation. That's what makes this product such a powerhouse late in the season. Supplementing molybdenum and boron in small amounts results in increased overall yield potential. Oh, all right, that makes, that makes total sense. Yeah, for sure. All right, so we've covered everything from fungicide timing as far as growth stages, the time of day, carrier rate, and additives, but what about tank mixing fungicides with insecticides to maximize our spray trip? Is it worth it or not? That's a great question. We know from previous research that a combined application of an insecticide and fungicide can result in a synergistic effect or net greater result. We have six year PFR data that shows a significant yield and ROI increase when using both a fungicide and insecticide together versus just using one or the other. So that's our wrap on fun with fungicides. I know there's a lot to think about. If you have any questions, contact your local field agronomist, seed advisor, or Bex dealer. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time on another episode of The, the Dig. Dig. We are so excited today to have Chad Kalaher, field agronomist in Illinois. <laughs> Why are you laughing? I had to think about you, were, you were thinking about how to say it. What? Did you see Kayla Hare? I said Kayla Hare. That's what he said. Kayla, Kayla Hare. Kayla Her. What did I say? I Kayla. said Kayla Her, right? No. What did I say? This is going to make the reels at the end. <laughs> I thought Kayla I said Her. Kayla Her. I thought I said yeah. Kayla Her. Kayla Her. Kayla, Kayla Her. Her. Go ahead. Go ahead.